at least half of the people at the table were looking back and forth between Marge Tutwiler and the unknown dark-haired man who seemed to be in danger of suffering an aneurysm before their very eyes. That the others were watching also did not go unnoticed by the Attorney General. Tutwiler cleared her throat loudly and asked, Excuse me, is everything all right? Rapp didn't hear her at first, and then he felt Irene Kennedy touch his arm. Slowly, Rapp let his hands fall from his face and looked up to find the attention of everyone at the table on him. When Tutwiler repeated her question, Rapp looked at her and said, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. In an extremely impatient tone, the Attorney General asked, Is there something you would like to add, or should we get you some aspirin for your headache? Rapp turned briefly to his bosses, who gave him no signal one way or another, and then directed his attention back to the Attorney General. As he registered the condescending expression on her face, something told him now was not the time to be meek. This was it. For the first time in this shitty journey, he knew where Rafik Aziz was and where he would be for the immediate future. Cover or no cover, there was a good chance this was going to be the last battle, and there was no sense in going home with a lot of unused ammo. Rapp straightened himself and said, I would most definitely like to add something. Actually, I would like to add a lot. He paused briefly and then said, First of all, if you only give him part of the money and ask him to release some of the hostages, he will blow his screwy lid. He will take one or more of the hostages right to the window so all of the cameras can watch, and he will kill them. He will blow their heads off on national TV. Tutwiler threw her head back and with a disapproving look said, Is that right, Mr. Mr. Cruz? And what exactly is your expertise in regards to negotiating with terrorists, Mr. Cruz? Rapp found the question so ridiculous he shook his head and laughingly replied, None. Tutwiler, not used to being treated in such a manner, turned to Baxter and said in a loud enough voice for half of the room to hear, What is this man doing here? Her arrogant question drove Rapp up and out of his chair with Irene Kennedy's hand gripping at his forearm. Rapp pried his boss's fingers loose, saying firmly, I've put way too much into this. Rapp began walking toward the podium. His suit, white shirt, and tie did a decent job of helping him blend in, but to anyone who cared to notice, it wasn't hard to figure out he was more than an analyst. When Rapp reached the podium, he repeated Tutwiler's question to the group. What is this man doing here? Rapp stared up at the ceiling as if mulling the question over. You know, I've asked myself that question a lot of times over the last decade, and I'm afraid I can't answer it for you. Rapp turned back toward Tutwiler, a look of feigned wonderment on his face. But I can answer your other question, the one about negotiating with terrorists. Rapp paused and then said casually, I don't negotiate with terrorists, Ms. Tutwiler. I kill them. I hunt them down, and I kill them. 